Cause and effect starts off with the Enterprise crew having a bit of a rough time. Cause and effect starts off with a nice, relaxing game of poker with the senior staff. When Beverly calls Riker's bluff, he kinda throws a bit of a temper tantrum and then just kinda sits there sulking. Bit of a poor sport, really. In sick bay, Jordy's complaining about an acute case of almost falling to his death. Beverly doesn't know what's wrong with him and she can't remember his medical history, but she goes ahead and injects him with something anyway. It may just be a placebo though, since she then tells him to just try staying away from things he can fall to his death from. One hopes it was indeed a placebo as when she gets back to her quarters, she starts having auditory hallucinations. So, you know, she dismisses that out of hand. She does mention it at the staff meeting, because apparently a bunch of other people experience the same thing, so she may not be going crazy. Might be something up with the comm system. At the same meeting, Jordy's saying it's going to take him another full day to realign the flux spectrometers, and Riker's all, 30 hours? You're incapable of that level of incompetence, Mr. LaForge. Luckily for Jordy, everyone gets called away to the bridge because the ship ran into a space cloud. Another ship? Oh, is that a Miranda class? I love the Miranda class. Anyway, another ship comes out of the cloud. The tractor beam isn't able to stop the new ship performing hit and run, and the Enterprise crew has a bit of a rough time. Cause and effect starts off with a nice, relaxing game of poker with the senior staff. When Beverly is about to call Riker's bluff, he nopes right out of that bet and folds his hand. A few meaningful looks are exchanged before Bev is called away. In sick bay, Jordy's complaining about an acute case of almost falling to his death. Beverly doesn't know what's wrong with him, but she remembers something about his medical history and decides against injecting him with anything. She looks over her records, never mind that most of these star dates are in the future, but doesn't find anything relevant. She prescribes him a dose of meaningful look and sends him on his way. It might be for the best that she didn't actually give him anything, since when she's going to bed, she starts having auditory hallucinations. Thankfully, she doesn't just dismiss this, and she goes to see her friend to talk about the weird things that have been happening. He's very supportive, giving her some tea and sharing her concerns, and assures her that they'll look into it. But naturally, at next morning's meeting, they insist that they couldn't find anything wrong. Luckily for Beverly, everyone gets called away to the bridge because the ship ran into a space cloud. Another ship? Hey, it's Miranda class! Miranda class is great! Anyway, another ship comes out of the cloud. They try to just push it out of the way, but their casual chatting about the problem meant they were too slow, and the Enterprise crew has a bit of a rough time. Cause and effect starts off with a bit of an intense game of poker with the senior staff. Everyone except Data is cheating, as they all know what cards are going to be drawn before they are. After the jig is up, Beverly calls sickbay to see if any excuses for leaving the table are there for treatment. Jordy shows up just in time, and Beverly excuses herself. Unfortunately for her, there's actually something wrong and she needs to put in some work to solve it. It turns out Jordy's visor was picking up distortions in the whatever tech field that are making him see things that aren't there, so he's going to have to go do some tech to fix it. Later, it turns out Jordy isn't the only one seeing things. Well, he is, Beverly's hearing things, but you get the idea. Things are being all weird and she records some of the weird stuff, and she started hearing things at the same time there was another distortion in the whatever field. Data's able to sort it all out, it's the overlapping voice of everyone on the ship, and Data learns way more than they ever wanted to about the crew, so everyone just agrees not to talk about it. The only relevant part is that they figure out they're stuck in a time loop but are going to be having a bit of a rough time later on as a result of... and they're going to to send Data a message in the next loop. That just doesn't look comfortable the way they're tinkering in that man's head though. Luckily for Data, everyone gets called away to the bridge because the ship ran into a space cloud. Another ship? That looks like the Reliant. It's a Miranda class, right? That's one of the best design. Anyway, another ship comes out of the cloud. Data takes his sweet time making his suggestion, so by the time it's executed, they've already collided. Data's able to send his time loop message thing though, but the rest of the crew's having a bit of a rough time. Cause and Effect starts off with a highly improbable game of poker with the senior staff. In this game, Worf actually wins for once in his life. I mean, I, I think he does. They all have three of a kind, so I think Worf wins with King High and I don't play poker. Anyway, after the game, in sick bay, Jordy's having some kind of problem with dizziness and almost falling to his death, and Beverly doesn't know what's causing it. So she decides to try something that seems to be completely unrelated with the old timey doctor excuse, I have a hunch. As we all know, hunches are always correct, so naturally she finds a causing him to see things that aren't there. Later on, they have a meeting about all the strange things they found, all of which indicate they're stuck in some kind of time loop. One of these strange things is the appearance of the number 3 all over the ship. The cards at poker or diagnostic data ran in apparently 2,083 other unspecified instances. I'm a bit unclear on how long it's been since the poker game that they had time for over 2,000 of these things, but hey. They speculate that maybe they sent themselves a message in the previous loop, and that's why 3 is showing up everywhere. They still don't know, however, what 3 is supposed to indicate, so Jordy's gonna run a pattern matching algorithm on the number 3, which just. It, it's an amazing line. Can you imagine how many results the computer would turn out if you asked it to find things matching three? It's gotta be in the millions. How can that possibly be useful, Jordy? Luckily for Jordy, everyone gets called away to the bridge because the ship ran into a space cloud. Another ship? It's a Miranda class. I think Miranda's probably my second favorite TOS class after Excelsior. Some people say the Constitution is the best, but honestly, I. Anyway, another ship comes out of the cloud. Luckily not too fast since Data takes a good 20 seconds to get around to following his orders and getting out of the way, and Worf apparently never bothered activating the tractor beam like he was ordered to. I guess it's a rare Worf reverse denial. 
In any case, with the disaster averted, Data is free to exposit about how the number 3 meant that Riker, with his three rank pips, was correct in his idea of how to avoid the collision. Once he's done, they're hailed by the other ship, the USS Bozeman. Uh, wait, Soyuz class? Not Miranda, just because it doesn't have a spoiler on that? It's clearly just a Miranda- whatever. And at the end of the episode, I'm not going back to edit the script. They get hailed, Frasier guys all, what year is it, and Picard tells them about the time loop, which the totally not a Miranda class even though it looks exactly the same USS Bozeman was stuck in for a good hundred years, and the day is saved once again.